what's up guys it's Actix here finally bringing you guys a tutorial I know it's been a long time but I've been enjoying my vacation so yeah so let's get into it so in this video I'm gonna be showing you guys or I'm gonna be sharing uh, a couple cool uh, text setups that I've used in the past and I'm basically I'm gonna give you the basic idea and then you guys can work off of that and then possibly make new styles etc so obviously start off with a blank new document and then let's go into MoGraph Mo text. Let's center this. Set the alignment to middle. Let's change the text to say tutorial. And the first font I'm going to use is Megadeth. So, first of all, I'm going to do my basic text setup. I'm going to duplicate my text. So, Control C, Control V. And then on the you're going to go to Caps, the Caps tab. Go to Start, Fill it and fill it and then change the radii to one centimeter on both and at this point the fill it cap has made an outline of the text and this is going to come in handy later on and you'll see why so let's make our first material uh, to make a new material you can either go to create new material or you can just double click in this open box down here uh, then just double click on the sphere and it'll open up your material editor so let's start off with a color. I'm gonna pick uh, a bit of a cyan, cyan color like that. Let's say I like that. However, this doesn't look very realistic. And basically, I'm just gonna go step by step what I always do. Uh, right click on the sphere in the top left corner, and then select Object Soft Shadow, and then go to Reflection. Check that. Go to Texture. Have a drop down menu, and then select Fresnel right here. And then this is a tad bit too much reflection because uh, on our text, if we have that much reflection, you're going to see the reflection of the other letters. And personally, I, I don't like that. I mean, you might, so you can leave it with as much uh, reflection as you wish. But I'm just going to tone it down to about 10% on both, like that. So this is, uh, it gives me a bit of reflection, but nothing, nothing too exaggerated. So now uh, this should be good for now so let's just drag and drop that onto the outside layer and as you can see that is what the fillet does it essentially allows you to use more than one color on your text which is very nice next up we're going to use our main text and let's actually make a new material once again right click on the top left corner object soft shadow and this time I'm gonna pick a gray a nice gray however oh Make sure that uh, when you make a new material, you select color because that was a mistake I made. I made it, I had it on the reflection tab. So make sure you're on color and then change the color. I'm going to go to like uh, a gray, but I'm going to leave it with this matte kind of color with no reflection because with the effect that we're going to go for later, you're going you're gonna to see why. So next up is using our first uh, plugin, which is Throwsy right here. And so let's go ahead and select Throwsy. This is a plugin which allows you to break up each letter into individual blocks. And so our Throwsy menu right here, uh, this gives us the number of pieces that we want each letter to be broken into. So let's pick something easy, like 25 pieces. Uh, I'm actually going to go with 20, just like that. You don't have to change anything else. Just go ahead and do break now. And as you can see, it's going to start breaking up each and every piece into 25 uh, individual polygons. So once it's done, you can go ahead and select all of the uh, fractures, which now contain all the broken pieces for each part. And select all of them by clicking on the first one, holding shift, clicking on the last one, and then do alt G, and that groups it into a null. Go ahead and, and rename that to whatever you want. I misspelled that. Oh well, there we go, Throwsy. Now reselect all your broken parts, and you're going to have on the bottom right hand corner go to the Effectors tab, which should be empty. And so while everything is still selected, go to MoGraph, Effector, and then Random. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, nothing has happened yet, but the final step is just clicking on the X's so you just click and then drag down without letting go and it selects all of them and then there you go, so that's that's a bit that's a bit crazy, so let's just go on to the random effector 
go to the effector tab and you're going to see the strength level right here let's just crank it down to about four percent okay that looks about right the only problem is with Throwsy, or one of the problems which I don't like is that especially when I use a fill cap it has these parts that poke through uh, poke through the blue edging or whatever edging you whichever color you chose so there's a very easy way of, of uh, going around of getting around that so let's go back into our random however we're going to go into the parameter tab and then here on the x y and z values you're just going to modify these and get them closer to the zero value the closer they are to the zero value, the closer they are to the vanilla settings, or quote unquote vanilla, which would mean that uh, there is no separation on the blocks. So let's just play around with this. This is the uh, you can you can tell by the different parts or the of the three values with what they do. So let's see the Y. There we go. So we don't have any more uh, black parts poking through the sides of the letter. Well, there's one on the bottom, but that's not an issue right now. So next up, we are going to let's just go ahead, drag and drop the Throwsy into the random, and then go to plugins, Griebler, Griebler, drag and drop the random into the Griebler, and what this does is it leaves you with a really cool sort of futuristic effect on your text, and the reason why we broke it first is now uh, it's a much more detailed. Uh, it has many more fine cuts uh, in the Griebler. If you hadn't done that, I can show you right now. Uh, let's see, can I show you right now? I will just to just to just to show you what it would look like. Mega Death. There we go. Let's put that into the Griebler, and it's it's far less detailed. Uh, compare as you can see it's all one piece uh, in the front and that's not something we're gonna go for so let's just go ahead and drag and drop that and as you can see that's a major change and it looks much better in my opinion so this is kind of crazy though so let's go into our Griebler and on the bottom right hand corner you have all the settings for the Griebler plugin so first up let's go to object uh, personally the, the seed the default seed always works well so you don't have to change that go to base you can change the minimum height I typically put it down to zero and then I change the maximum anything between five and ten centimeters next up I go to stock greebles and greebles are all these little polygons which are on the broken uh, parts of the greebler as you can see they're pointing out from all the ends personally I think it ruins the look so you're just gonna unselect generate greebles and that'll take care of it. However, if you feel like you still like them, you can go ahead and select it, and then you're gonna have uh, the shapes tab at the very bottom, and this allows you to pick out exactly which ones you want. So if, usually, if I were to use it, I would deselect all and then only pick the square, uh, just because I like simple shapes, stuff like this, I think it just ruins the cleanliness of your render. So let's just go ahead and unselect that. And the reason why we had our fillet in the beginning is because now you have this nice blue outline. And depending on the font you use, this might become slightly difficult to read, especially once you're in Photoshop. So this blue outline allows you to uh, have a more legible text. So uh, this is it for the first one. Let's go ahead and move on to the second uh, Griebler text style. Let's go ahead and go to MoGraph, MoText. Let's center it once again. I'm going to pick uh, any font really. Typically something more rounded works well. I'm going to go with uh, four keys if I can find it. Let's see. Let's see. These are all very good fonts. So I'll have the names in the in the description. There it is. It should be around here. Four key. Where is it? There it is. Four keys. And this is a very nice tunish, uh, car like cartoonish, uh, rounded text, which already has this like tilted letters, which I like. And let's go ahead and horizontal spacing. I'm just going to split that up a bit just because I don't like the letters colliding like that. 
And we're just going to duplicate that. We can change the depth. So let's just select both and then turn up the depth a bit. Then on the duplicate, you're just going to go to plugins, Griebler, Griebler. You don't have to add any caps or anything, just leave it as default and then drag and drop it into the Griebler. Once it's in the Griebler, just select the, the Griebler itself and then drag and, and uh, pull it behind your, your main text a bit. And so what this does is it leaves you with a nice... Uh, the Griebler is it's actually a very unique plugin, especially if you, uh, if you know how to mess around with the settings. Uh, to be honest, I have not experimented with it a lot, so I'm, I only know the basic basic things for this, but it's a very unique uh, plugin which I really enjoy using. So uh, let's just mess around with this, take off the stock, rebels, and this is not the best example for the font, but this usually actually works much better with logos, and I'm going to show you an example. I'll go into my renders, put their, uh, renders. This came out very nice. I really like the look of it. As you can see, I put the red uh, Griebler behind the logo, and it made these little uh, points stick out. And to make them all random, like they were in that render, you just go to your Griebler, your base, you make your height and your maximum, your minimum and maximum, uh, very different numbers. If they are very close, then for example, if I were to make this 11, as you can see, the like the difference in length is not as great as if the minimum is obviously something lower like that. So moving on to the next one, I'm just going to keep this uh, this uh, font because it's going to be fine. So let's just go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and duplicate our text once again. And on the duplicate, you're going to select it and hit the letter C on your keyboard. And what this does is it essentially makes it editable. So unfortunately, the only downside of this is that you can no longer edit what the text says. So make sure you get the text right before you hit the letter C. So you're just going to keep opening up all these folders until you get down to the splines of each letter. And you're just going to drag these out. So just to see what I did there, I clicked on the first spline, hold it control, clicked on the second one, and then clicked on the third one while still holding control. And essentially what that does is it skips everything else and it's only what I, what I click on. So now that we have all three of the splines here, I'm going to bring in our uh, third uh, plugin, which is Reaper X. And this is something that was used a while back, but it's still a really unique and cool plugin. And as you can see, it essentially it makes coils using the uh, the splines of your text. You can do the same thing with your logo. And uh, so we're just going to select all of our Reapers, go to the bottom right hand, which is all the settings, always. And we're going to go down to our general and change the radius. Let's just bring that down a bit. And strands down to one or two. And then just turn down the coils. This is obviously down to personal preference. Uh, Honestly, having a text like that looks really not not very not very good. Usually, having something with lower coils and then pushing back the Reaper X's behind the text a bit, so something like that, that typically looks better. Especially if in Photoshop you were to add cool effects such as a lightning a lightning bolt or something like that, something that uh, makes these uh, Reaper X's stand out, that could look really cool. So. That's another one. I'm trying to think of what else I can do here. Uh, there is Kurulumu. I'm going to go ahead and show you this. I'm not very experienced with this plugin at all, but I'm going to do my best and see if I can uh, help you guys out. So, once you bring this up, you're going to see the spline, which is very, very strange. But you're going to go down to your spline settings, and I believe it's the kill small. Yeah, you're just going to boost that up to something like 130 and then you're going to bring in a circle from your spline menu you're going to change the radius to something like 20 centimeters for example or 25 go to your Kurulumu, go to the mesh and then here it says profile spline you can just click here and then click on the circle and essentially the circle is the diameter or the radius of the of the tentacle so 
obviously you can change that and respectively it will change the tentacle. I think 20 looks pretty good. I'm just going to stick with uh, 25. So that, that looks pretty good already. And this is a really cool, uh, really cool effect if you're good at molding this in between letters. So for example, if I were to bring in the text, I'm going to choose, let's see what font I can use, uh, this one. No, usually a thicker font is going to look better. Yeah, this is fine. So Megatron, let's go ahead and center that. To scale down, this is this is slightly big right now, but I like the length and just like the ratio right now. So I'm just going to click on this button right here, and then you're just going to click and drag down, and essentially that, that scales it. However, as you can see, the radius remains the same. So you're just going to want to tweak the, actually, my mistake, uh, I believe, let's see, try selecting both Kuru Lumen and the circle. Yeah, there you go. So just select both the circle and the Kuru Lumen, and it will uh, bring them down in size. So then I would recommend having these randomly placed throughout your render, and then just looping through your, looping through your letters. So for example, having something coming from behind, I would try, try your best not to show the base right there. I just feel like it kind of ruins the look. So try to keep that hidden and then have these tentacles popping out and uh, it can look really cool. Like for example, this is not the best example, but it's it's something. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, tentacles, here it is. This is something that I made using messing with materials and stuff like that. Try to hide the base, have it coming from behind your logo. And then here I used Nitro Blast as well as a nice lava material on the, on the tentacles. And I think, I think it came out pretty cool, especially with the color correction, it looked great. So that's actually pretty much it, guys. Uh, that's a good amount of styles right there. And I'm going to leave the links uh, to download all of these uh, plugins. The only problem, the only plugin which might cause a problem is Griebler because... Uh, it does require a, uh, a, I'm sorry, a serial number, but there are tons of key generators out there which work perfectly. So I'm actually going to show you guys really quickly how to install these plugins uh, for the people that don't know already. So uh, it, let's say you don't have anything open. Let's just close Cinema 4D entirely. Wait for this to close. Oh, this, this, these are these are my packs which I use in everything I do. This is like, my, my color correction pack is something like 60 color corrections and uh, my uh, stocks pack has an absolutely like a shit ton of stocks. So it's very highly recommendable. It's, it's a really good pack. I'm obviously, I'm not pushing anybody to buy it, but I really recommend it. So if you're interested, just PM me and I can let you know about the prices. So to install it, you're going to go ahead and go to wherever you downloaded it. Let's say for example, uh, this is a plugin, for example, and for Mac at least, you're going to want to find the location folder. So if you have a Mac, you can just hold Command, click on Cinema 4D while it's in your dock, and it should open a finder window. There we go. That brings you straight to the source of the Cinema 4D uh, folder. If not on a PC, I'm pretty sure. Maxon, so just all caps Maxon, and it'll bring you to something similar to this. So when you through your downloads, you're just gonna have a different uh, folder open, and then you're gonna go to plugins, and then you're just gonna go and drag and drop them inside, and it's it's as easy as that. Uh, make sure you have your Cinema 4D closed while you are adding or removing plugins. If not. Uh, it will not work and so just restart your Cinema 4D after you're done installing it and everything should work. So that's pretty much it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this and my next tutorial is going to be some uh, tips and tricks on how I blend my stocks to make them look natural and just some uh, other tips on which stocks to use etc. So hopefully you'll enjoy that and yeah that's pretty much it guys. Peace out.